Most of us are often confronted with the question of what am I, sometimes as early as elementary school. The answers can be complex. The truth is we all don't fit into one box. We come in different shapes, sizes, skin tones, orientations, and ideologies, which has led to the creation of terms that feel more authentic. My name is Shannara Cruz Wilson and I identify as Latina. Hi, Jorge Moraga. I identify as Salvadoran American with a Chicano, Chicana, Chicanex political consciousness. My name is Edith Mata and I am an indigenous person. These are just a few of the many terms used to self-identify within the greater community. Dr. Jorge Moraga with CSUB explains some of these terms like Hispanic or Latino are made to serve as an umbrella for all people of 33 Latin American countries plus Spain. Hispano and Hispanic was in many ways imposed on everyone and so it becomes a bit more difficult to kind of tease out what exactly we mean when we say Hispano versus what exactly we mean when we say any nationally based group or the, the other pan-ethnic term Latino, Latina, Latinx. Regardless, that one size fits all does not sit well with everyone. Edith Mata has begun the process of leaning to her roots through language and dance like this one. They want to say who you are. They want to say, no, you're Hispanic because you look Hispanic. But in reality, it's like, I'm an indigenous person. For Mata, education has been key in her process of self-identity. Learn about Mesoamerican history, um, where my ancestors come from, which mine are Maya and Mexica. She adds that she knows not everyone will understand her decision, but that she has found liberation and peace in claiming this identity. All three agree that one word cannot represent 34 countries when each region brings a different set of traditions and values. And even within the U.S., some have adopted different identities based on location. Tejano for those in Texas, New Rican for Puerto Ricans in New York. There are even broader terms to nationality based on terms like Chicano, which began as a social and political movement in the 60s used to identify people of Mexican descent born or living across the United States. Chicano has now also grown to include Chicanex, which similar to Latinx is a way to also include the LGBTQ community by making the terms gender neutral. However, some like Shannara Cruz Wilson, who is of Salvadorian descent, embraces terms like Hispanic and Latina as a way to stand united with all different cultures. She recalls first hearing and not really questioning the term Hispanic while growing up watching Spanish news with her grandma. I didn't really start to think about it a whole lot until I grew up and noticed that, hey, I'm a lot browner. <laughs> And sometimes I get put into another kind of box. She adds people are often surprised when she speaks Spanish or want to assume she is Mexican. To me, it kind of makes me sad. Like, there's a lot of um, African descended people that live in like Honduras and Puerto Rico, Cuba, that speak Spanish, that's their native tongue. But if you know, if you're from here, they might question and be like, whoa. Cruz Wilson says the beautiful thing about Latinos is we can all look different but still have that sense of kinship. For Dr. Jorge Moraga, there is no right or wrong answer. I, you know, call yourself what you want. Hispano, Latina, Chicana, um, Latinx, Latin. Um, as long as your values and your sense of, of worth are, are resonated in that term. Dr. Moraga adds these self-identities change from generation to generation. For example, Latinx is still not fully accepted by everyone, but is slowly gaining traction, and today is considered one of the more inclusive terms. The bottom line is finding a term you connect with and that gives you pride in your heritage is up to you. Live in studio, Vani Patino, 23ABC, connecting you.